day three. It's seven, and I am the last one to leave. Uh, yesterday I was one of the first people to leave and I left at like 7.30. And this morning, um, most people were gone by 6.30, but a good portion of them left at six. Um, and I'm just waiting for my next YouTube video to upload and then I'm headed out, but. Um, and actually I'm just the last one to leave in this room. I, there, are, there are others still lingering around, but. Uh, I did wake up this morning around 5.30 and in a little bit of a panic because I could barely move. I was always a little worried that I was, was going to suffer today, but now that I'm up and wandering and like moving around, I'm, I'm actually like totally fine. Um, bien camino. Uh, the Today, luckily, but luckily today is a, a little bit of a lighter day, and that's probably probably a good thing. Uh, I just my muscles were a little bit sore. The guy next to me that I walked um, to the albergue with has already got two blisters on his feet, um, and so I, uh, I I feel feel bad for him because he's really anxious to get to the cathedral. Um, so he, he has to do the full stages and day one he already has two blisters. So I hope I hope he's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, this has been a, a fairly uneventful albergue to stay in. Um, my breakfast this morning, the roll of my cheese bread was actually really, really satisfying. I, I might have gotten two rolls, but I, I'm actually really good. Uh, the, the coffee, the vending machine coffee was exactly what you would expect from vending machine coffee. I only drank a couple sips of it before I dumped it out, but uh, it's, that's okay. So yeah, I'm headed off. Um, I'll get to Villa de Condi um, probably before lunch, honestly. And then I can have sit and have a good lunch. Uh, I need to get a, like a, a good hearty meal and, some, and a salad. <laughs> Um, and I'll find a, a place to stay there and then keep going. Day three. Found some new cows. Hi, Mr. Cow. <laughs> I'm just on this tiny little road and on my way out of the, the town where the albergue was. Um, and one thing I am noticing this morning is that like my right obliques are, uh, I wouldn't say sore, but are clearly not, not as strong as my left side obliques. And I noticed that when I first started doing yoga a couple years ago, um, and I always assumed that because I'm right-handed, that my right side was always the stronger side. Uh, and so I often would do extra exercises on my left side to try to um, correct the imbalance. But what I noticed when I started doing yoga was that it's in fact my left side that is it is stronger. It is not as flexible or as agile. And so all of my agility comes from my right side. But my left side is actually the stronger side and is what I use to stabilize myself. And in thinking back through my life about this in, imbalance and um, I uh, have attributed it to when I was in high school, I played the sousaphone in marching band, and most of the weight of the sousaphone sat on your left side. The sousaphone hung on your left shoulder, um, and so it was really my left side that would bear the weight of the 
of the sousaphone. Um, and in fact, for many years, I wouldn't wear anything other than a crew neck t-shirt because my shoulder muscles were, were visibly different and my left shoulder muscle, muscle was significantly larger than my right shoulder muscle and so it looked like I was always leaning to my right but it, it wasn't that it was that my <laughs> my muscles were were not the same size um anyway so that's what I've sort of attributed this imbalance of my muscles from my left to my right side especially my core area um and so today you know my backpack is fairly balanced you know um, I'm where I'm bearing the weight on both shoulders not on just my left side um <clears throat> but it is my right side and my right oblique specifically that I am feeling are not not quite as strong um so that was kind of a an interesting realization that I had this morning as I've been you know getting up and getting going and walking and putting my backpack on but the left side doesn't even notice I'm doing anything but my right side I can feel it. I decided not to take the coastal route today. I, when I got up this morning, I just, I just didn't have the brain power to think through changing course. I've already read the guidebook for this course or this route. <clears throat> I've studied the map, so I'm a little more familiar with it. And yeah, everything is really well way marked, but I just thought. Stay the course and keep keep doing what I had started doing, and I'll get to the coast tomorrow. So I'm just still kind of walking through through the not the center of Portugal, but definitely more inland than on the coast. The coast is not very far though. kind of tree this is but it is really pretty or vine probably I don't know very lovely uh, lovely lovely flowers some beautiful hydrangeas These roses are super fragrant. stopped and got a, a good cup of coffee and uh, some toast just at a cafe. I'm here in Villa de Conde. I got here at like 10 a.m. The albergues don't open till like 2 p.m. So I have some time to kill. So I just hung out at this cafe for like an hour. Um, they probably thought I was super weird. <laughs> but um, my pace has slowed quite a bit. I just thought I would take it pretty easy because I'm clearly in no rush to get there. Um, but yeah, that's uh, where I'm at. I'm already here. I've gone thirteen thousand steps so far. And uh I'll just have to figure out what to do with myself for the next couple of hours until until the albergue opens and hope I can find a bed. 
really have to be vigilant for and look for the way marker because this is the road I have been on and so I would naturally be inclined to continue on this road except that the way marker is right there and pointing me down that road. So again, I am very grateful for whoever has put up these way markers or I would have gotten lost many times. But they keep all the pilgr pil <laughs> pilgrims uh, safe and on track and going the right direction so we're not lost. like really well done graffiti. Snoopy, Snoopy, won't you please come home? Come home, come home. I've made it to the city center, Villa de Conde. I'm crossing this bridge over the river. I don't know why heights over water don't bother me as much as heights over land but they don't <laughs> look at somebody sailing there's another Pellegrino up here Oh, there are a couple of them trying to cross the street. The first pilgrims I've seen on route. Um, there are some way markers over there, one that's going forward and one that's going left. There, uh, yeah, yeah, you heard it, it's right here. Um, so this says, Camino Portuguese de Costa, which is my route, is to turn right. And de, de Vio Albergue. Uh, that's probably where I want to go, is to the Albergue. <clears throat> so the path actually took me under the bridge. Into the other side of the road. I get a closer view of the sailors. I've been just sitting here at this park waiting until the albergue opens, but I just saw like the third set of pilgrims walk by. And so now I feel like I have to, should go sit at the albergue and wait just to make sure I can get a, get a bed tonight. Because clearly, I mean, like this, this is stage one, and so this, this is the end goal, and so, so the, uh, um, there's a, there's a lot more people that'll be trying to get, get beds here than at the places I have been staying that have been off stage. So I think I'm, I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna <laughs> head to the albergue and just wait out in front of it in hopes that I can still get a bed. I did text them, but I haven't heard back. Um, I'm gonna try to call, but they're not open yet, and so they probably won't answer quite yet, but we'll see. Here's hoping I get a bed. We have the albergue, but they're not open yet. But there's a restaurant right in the same like plaza that has the, the pilgrim's menu. It's the first one I've seen. Pilgrims sitting here, right, already right, waiting, having lunch. So, uh, uh, it will it may be a challenge to get a bed tonight. At least here, I might have to walk a little further to go to a different albergue or find a hostel or something to stay in. That's not exclusively for pilgrims, but we'll see what happens. So here is my pilgrim's menu, or meal. 
breaded chicken, rice, french fries, soup, and a cerveza for 8 euros. I think that is a steal, honestly. So it's the end of day three. Um, pretty uneventful day. I wasn't very far away from the albergue when I started this morning. And uh, so once I got here, I've kind of just been stretching, most, mostly spending the day stretching. Um, end of day stats are, my, I'm at 23,000 steps. My lunch was, um, eight dollars. I paid ten dollars for a two dollar tip. Breakfast was two, no, I think it was like one, one ninety for the, I don't know, it was like two, two fifty because I also got a big giant thing of water. So coffee, some toast, and a big giant thing of water. It was like two fifty. The albergue I'm staying in tonight, it was ten dollars. Um, and then uh, uh, it also provides breakfast in the morning so I'm planning on doing that have breakfast I actually so so a couple of the people I ran into or I met on the first night at the first albergue who were actually taking a different course or different course different route they were taking the central route and I'm taking the coastal route um, they got lost on their their route and decided to take the coastal route so they took the train here today and now so now they're staying at this albergue again today so it's kind of nice that you know we're I'm meeting familiar faces um, I probably will walk with them for a little while tomorrow at least for a portion of the day since we're going the same route might it might as well um, and they they got lost and so they keep asking me for help um, like navigating their map and figuring out how, so I, I at least feel like I'm gonna walk with them for a little while just to kind of show it's, it's interesting this is my first Camino and I've never done this before either but I'm like already helping people figure out their way which I uh, really makes me feel good that I can I can be of service so anyway that's that's kind of the day um, so I, I'm officially at the end of stage one I uh, took me three days <laughs> but I, I didn't I did not push myself very much today and I'm really glad I didn't I'm really glad I just kind of took it easy today I think it'll make the the rest of the week go a lot easier and I was thinking about it earlier today that I I have way way more than enough time to do this if you're supposed to do this in two weeks I have like almost six weeks to do it so I so I, sh I shouldn't I shouldn't push myself any more than I have to so anyway that's it I'm in Villa de Conde um, end of day three uh, I think it's Saturday something oh so uh, oh and then I just went to the grocery store and, and picked up some groceries Powerade a banana just something to kind of snack on I, I don't have any snacks a lot of the uh, uh, pil pilgrims a good portion of the weight of their backpack is that they're carrying around food um, and I am not I'm not doing that I don't have any snacks I don't have anything like that I just have my water bottle um, but I do need electrolytes, so I did stop and get a Powerade and um, a banana. So that was like all in total with everything I bought. It was like just just a little, a little over ten dollars. So it today has been like the most expensive day, um, but it still was only like a twenty-five not dollars. It's euros. I keep doing that. It's still only like a twenty-five euro day. <laughs> One day I'll figure this out. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's that's all for me today. I will check back in tomorrow. Bien camino.